on multi-year agreements. There are sort of different types of multi-year agreements. Collective bargaining is sort of the classic example. You have costs over a period of years based on a contract that's been agreed to. And even though the contract may have been agreed to, the cost items are still subject to legislative body approval because the legislative body appropriates money. Mm -hmm. um, the way that it works with collective bargaining agreements is that the cost items, the expense that is associated with this multi-year collective bargaining agreement goes to the voters for approval. All right, and so the voters appropriate it, the voters say yes, and what, what happens is the total cost items for the life of the collective bargaining agreement have to be disclosed up front to the voters during that, during that fiscal year at that town meeting. And if the voters have that disclosure and they say yes, and they say yes to that article and they adopt those cost items, they, that is a way that one town meeting sort of binds into the future. It's a way of binding to a multi-year contract and it is authorized. And in fact, it goes beyond collective bargaining agreements because it can happen with other multi-year agreements that the governing body wants to enter into. And they can do that, but it's the same idea that the full cost of that multi-year contract must be adequately disclosed to the legislative body <coughs> and adopted by the legislative body in order for the legislative body to bind going forward. Because remember, the idea is that appropriations lapse at the end of the year. So if you want the legislative body to approve multiple years of appropriations for a contract, they're going to have to have those cost items for the whole life of the contract disclosed and say yes to those cost items for the full life of the contract. Multi-year equipment leases, there are some special year, uh, rules with multi-year equipment leases. Obviously, equipment leases are an important part of any municipality. If there is a so-called escape clause in the multi-year lease agreement, that it's a simple majority because the voters are actually adopting the amount for each year of the multi-year lease at each town meeting. So they do it each year, and the escape clause allows the governing body to get out of the contract if the voters don't appropriate it in any given year. So if it's a five-year lease and the voters, and it has an escape clause, and the voters say yes the first three years, and they say no the fourth year, um, there's no appropriation, they can't spend for that purpose, the governing body can use the escape clause to get out of the multi-year lease. If there's no escape clause, which means they can't get out of it, um, then it's considered, um, um, long-term debt under 33 section 7e and there are some different rules for it and this term Sanborn eyes that you see that we have up on the slide here that comes from a case um, the, out of Sanborn, Sanborn um, school district Sanborn yeah. school district and sort of that's where the term came from yeah. was how do, how are collective bargaining agreements properly adopted and we now say that we have to Sanbornize them which simply means adequately disclose the cost items mm -hmm. for the life of the contract and it applies to all multi-year contracts not just collective bargaining bargaining agreements.